The maid glanced round warily and sprinkled the deadly poison into the dessert. Then, she calmly hid the vial of poison in her corset. A bowl of poison dessert was quickly brought to the table, but before the dessert could be served, Crown Prince Peter snatched it from her. The maid took advantage of the conversation with the Crown Prince's fiancé to transfer the poison dessert to Friedrich's plate. Peter, however, said he would like the orange dessert as well. Friedrich graciously offered to share it with him. The next moment, she handed it to her fiancé, Peter, as the maid of honor watched the prince faint it with nerves as he was about to bite into a piece of the dessert, Peter suddenly remembered his dog. So he immediately put down the dessert and ran to play with the dog. Eventually, the poison dessert found its way into Friedrich's stomach. Unaware of the danger, the girl ate her breakfast and started studying again. She hired a professional Russian tutor to learn Russian pronunciation word by word and began practicing Russian court etiquette. Every day before her wedding was filled with a schedule. On this day, Friedrich was walking and memorizing her words when she came to the portrait of Peter the Great. She had just picked up the saber Peter the Great had forged when Empress Elizabeth and Peter, who were strolling by, ran into her. Her fiancé grabbed the saber like a child and played with it like a toy. His cavalier attitude infuriated Empress Elizabeth. Elizabeth snatches it away and puts it back where it belongs, and then talks to the two children about her father's story with a mixture of despair and anger. Friedrich, who is well versed in the psychology of the characters, praises Peter the Great and then the Empress in fluent Russian. Her unintentional ambition pleases Elizabeth, who is also ambitious. However, her mother, who had just come out of poverty, became obsessed with lust and began an affair with a handsome court painter. No sooner had they made love than her daughter, struggling with her studies, returned to her room. Friedrich asked her why she had betrayed her father. Her mother snorted and confessed that she had never loved her husband because she preferred brutal men to a polite husband. Friedrich believed in love and pursued it, but her mother's words were a curse she couldn't shake for the rest of her life. Soon she had no energy left to think about it. The poison the maid had given her began to work its way into her system. Her pale, snowy face was the subject of much discussion. Friedrich could only hold herself together in public, but she couldn't help coughing up blood as her condition worsened. Friedrich stumbled back to her room and fainted on the bed. Her maid immediately called for a doctor. After bleeding her out and pretending to be worried about her, the doctor went to the Empress and her ministers to report on her progress. He said that Friedrich had a hereditary disease and that there was nothing he could do about it with the current state of medical care. Elizabeth, half believing him, immediately calls the ministers to conduct a secret investigation and insist that they find out the truth about the illness of the crown prince's fiancé. Because the poison was administered only once, and because of Friedrich's extraordinary immunity, her condition gradually began to improve. Seeing that the plan has failed, the doctor finds his old flame who poisoned her before. He asks her to poison the dessert again, on the pretext that he'll run away with her. The love-struck woman decides to poison the crown prince's fiancé. While poisoning, she accidentally broke the tableware and was frightened by the sound of ceramics hitting the floor. But after adjusting her emotions, she picked up the dessert and tried to risk poisoning Friedrich again. Only this time, the plot was foiled by a fresh orange. Another maid noticed her unusual behavior and pulled a fresh orange from her pocket to tempt Friedrich. So Friedrich refused the orange jelly because she had something she wanted more. When the plot was foiled, the woman was furious and chased after the maid who got in her way. She slapped her across the face as soon as she stepped outside. Even if she knocked her to the ground, she couldn't get rid of her anger, and finally she kicked her. Her violent behavior was reprimanded by the minister. The maid fled from the scene of the crime, fearing that the poisoning would be exposed. In a state of panic, she found her lover, the doctor. She explains that not only has the poisoning failed, but it may have aroused the suspicion of the ministers. She begged her lover to get her out of there. The doctor immediately said he had arranged for a carriage to take her away. After coaxing a silly woman away, he wrote a letter without stopping. The maid followed the carriage to Enin and obediently handed the letter to the innkeeper. Little did she know that this was the alarm that would kill her. She was assassinated in the night. Meanwhile, in the Russian palace, the doctor was destroying letters to and from France. But he was one step too slow and was caught by the guards who came to search him. All the doctor's treasonous letters were sent to the empress. Elizabeth ordered him to be stripped of all his possessions and subjected to a painful branding with an iron bar. Friedrich's health gradually began to improve without the interference of the bad doctor and she received news that Peter was coming to visit her. So she ran happily to the dressing mirror and hurriedly began to dress herself. She didn't want to give Peter that impression that she was sick and unkempt. She didn't realize that this man wasn't worth it. 
Peter had never set foot in her hospital room in the early stages of her illness when her life was in doubt. When Saul Tikov persuaded him to visit his fiancée, Peter said he wanted Friedrich dead so he could marry the Polish princess. He waited for Friedrich to get well before he came to see her because he didn't want to be scolded by his aunt. As soon as he arrived in his fiancée's hospital room, he kept his distance from Friedrich. Then he had a feat of the crazies and said things that hurt her. He brought his fiancée a soothing gift after he made her cry. He even invited Friedrich to go to the theater with him. He tortured the girl, who was in love for the first time with the carrot and stick. The girl had prepared a surprise to please her fiancé. She pushed him to the sand table. After the black blindfold was lifted, the crown prince was instantly attracted to the gift. He slowly knelt down to look at it. A whole set of exquisite military dolls were presented in formation on the sand table. Peter had never received such a precious gift before had even kept praising his fiancé. So he grabbed his violin and played some beautiful music to thank his fiancé. Friedrich smiled brightly in the peaceful and joyful atmosphere. The arrival of Empress Elizabeth was the culmination of her joy. This meant that Empress Elizabeth had set a date for their engagement, something Friedrich had dreamed of. What surprised her even more was that the Empress had more than one surprise in store for her. She chose a new Russian name for Friedrich Ekaterina Alexeyevna. It was Elizabeth's mother's name. Then the Empress took out a magnificent necklace and put it around Ekaterina's neck. She told her to forget her past poverty and misery and start a new life. Ekaterina's comeback was based on only one trait, her ability to observe and think. That day, the new Ottoman ambassador came to the Empress with his country's national treasure. The moment the ancient jewelry box was opened, the blood-colored gems shone brightly. Everyone scratched their necks to get a glimpse of the jewel and lost their minds in its splendor. Friedrich was the only one watching Peter's performance. He was having fun with his military dolls without paying attention to anyone else in the room. She recalled that the day before at the theater, Peter had held a toy longsword in his hand and had been kicking and marching in parade, imitating the king of Prussia. Friedrich knew his interests and had a good idea of how to please her fiancé. When the party was over, she hurried down the street to find the most skillful blacksmith. Once she had considered all the details of the doll's construction, she would explain them to the blacksmith in great detail. She hoped it would be a success and that she'd get her fiancé's approval for the wedding ceremony. She treated Peter like a child and it worked like a charm. After pleasing her fiancé and changing her name, what fate awaits Ekaterina?